Hi guys, welcome to the second part of the reaction of carbonate compounds. Now we continue the reaction of carbonate compound with the reaction with water. In this reaction, water can act as a nucleophile either in acidic or base. In the reaction, aldehyde are more electrophilic since they have fewer electron donating alkyl groups. What is the electron donating alkyl group? Let's see. So this is the uh, aldehyde and then this is the ketone. So it means that in ketone, they have uh, they contain more the alkyl group compared than the aldehyde. That's why this aldehyde, okay, this aldehyde is more favorable in this reaction. So in this reaction, the carbonic compound reacts with water to form the diol compounds. Why we call it as the diols compound? Because when it reacts with C double bond O, the C double bond O will open up and it will form or it bond with two hydroxyl groups here. That's why we call it the diol. Same as ketone, okay? When ketone reacts with water, it also forms the diol compounds. The C double bond O, it will open and then it will bond with two hydroxyl groups. So this is the reaction of carbonic compound with water. Next is the reaction of catalytic hydrogenation. In the reaction, the carbonic compound reacts with rainy nickel, which is the finely divided nickel powder saturated with hydrogen gas. In the reaction, the platinum and rhodium, the platinum or rhodium will be used as a catalyst. So, in the reaction, the, in the, reaction, the carbonyl react with rainy nickel to form the alcohol compound. Okay, to, go, to form the alcohol compound. Either ketone or aldehyde, it will react with rainy nickel to form the alcohol compound. It means it only bond with one hydroxyl group. So, this reaction is different with the reaction with water because when the carbonyl compound reacts with water it will form two bond of uh, hydroxyl group however when in uh, when the catalytic uh, when the carbonyl compound react in the catalytic hydrogenation with rainy nickels it will form only one bond with the hydroxyl group so there are difference between these two Reaction. We move to the next reaction, which is the oxidation of carbonyl compounds. So, in the oxidation of carbonyl compounds, is one of the reaction that distinguish the aldehyde and ketone, because in the reaction only aldehyde can form a product when it react with the oxidizing agent. However, in ketone, when it reacts with oxidizing agent, it will give no reaction. So, if you can see here, why the aldehyde can react with the oxidizing agent? Because of the aldehydes have the CHO proton that can be abstracted during the oxidation, but not ketone. If you can see, when the C double bond O at the terminal, the H here can be uh, can be. Uh, involved in the oxidation to form the carboxylic acid okay can be formed the carboxylic acid when it reacts with the oxidizing agent however since in the ketone there are no hydrogen because the c double bond o at the uh, in the middle of the structure so when it react with the oxidizing agent it will give no reaction for example when hexanal react with the chromium oxide in aqueous acid in the acetal medium, okay, it will form the hexanoic acid. Simple. When the hexanal react with chromium acid, okay, the H here, okay, will convert into the OH. Okay, simple, simple reaction. So it means that the hexanal will convert into the hexanoic acid. In the oxidation reaction also, the hexanal or aldehyde also can react with KMnO4 
and hot HNO3 that it also it give the carboxylic acid of compound so it means that in the reaction either the aldehyde can react with the CRO3 in aqueous acid or you can give the reaction with the KMnO4 in hot HNO3 it gives the same compound for example here let's see if I give this reaction okay when it react with CR3 O plus and uh, H3O plus in acetone, okay, in acetone, it will react, okay, sorry, it will react to form the carboxylic acid. Also, like this one, okay, when it react with the K metal 4 in hot HNO3, it gives also the compound of the carboxylic acid which means that this H you just change it to the OH okay as I said before ketone doesn't react with the oxidation agent however in some case okay ketone can undergo the slow cleavage reaction when it treated with the hot alkaline k 4 to form the dioic acid okay to form the dioic acid it means that when the ketone react with the k 4 in the hot uh, in the hot alkaline medium it will cleavage for example if you can see in the example here when the cyclohexanone react with k 4 in the alkaline uh, in the hot alkaline medium it will uh, dissociate Okay, it will dissociate into this one and then both of the carbon will go through and undergo the reaction to form the C double bond O O H. Okay, C double bond O H and then C double bond O H. So this is the first carbon here and then this one is will be the second carbon. Okay, it will cleavage to form the dioic acid. Next, we move to the another oxidation reaction, which is the reaction with Todens reagent. This reaction also known as silver mirror test. This reaction can be used to distinguish the aldehyde from the ketone because the ketone do not react with the Todens reagent. Okay, same as the oxidation reaction where the ketone cannot be oxidized. Okay, if you can see here, when the aldehyde react with the tollen reaction, it will give a positive result, which is it gives the silver mirror image. So this is the reaction of the aldehyde with tollen reagent. So tollen reagent, known as the ammoniacal silver nitrate solution. And then this tollen reagent contain the silver amine complex ion AG and H32. So when the aldehyde warm with the tollen reagent, the colorless complex ion, which is the AG and H32, is reduced by an aldehyde. Okay, and then it will give the product, which is uh, the gray metallic silver. So this is the equation of the reaction of aldehyde with the tollen region when the aldehyde react with the tollen region it will give the uh, gray metallic silver which is the silver metal if you can see the example here when the benzaldehyde go through the tollen region it will give the benzoic acid Okay, the reaction will go through without harming the carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, which means it just convert the H of the aldehyde into the OH. And of course, in the tollen region, it will give the silver metal, which gives the silver mirror positive result. Another region, another reaction that can distinguish the 
aldehyde and carbonyl is direction with failing solution. What is failing solution? Failing solution is a mixing copper sulfate with the solution of sodium potassium tartrate in NaO. Okay, as I said, it can distinguish the aldehyde from ketone because the ketone will do not react with the failing solution. If you can see from the diagram here, the deep blue color failing solution will disappear when we add some aldehyde in the solution and then it will disappear to form the reddish brown precipitate which is the precipitate of the copper oxide that form in the solution of failing. So this is the chemical equation of the failing solution. As I said, when the aldehyde react with the failing solution, it will give a copper oxide which will precipitate it in the solution and give the brick, uh, the brick red color of precipitate. So this is how that uh, the solution, this is how that the reaction uh, detect the presence of aldehyde. If you, uh, if you uh, react the failing solution with the ketone, it will give the same color of the failing solution, which give the negative results. For the summary, the aldehyde and ketone can be divided by using few methods, which is the first one is Oxidation with the CrO3, which is the aldehyde, will give the positive result, and then ketone will give no reaction. Okay, no reaction. The second one is the Tollen test. Okay, Tollen test, which is it will give the silver mirror image. And then for the ketone, it will give no reaction as well. And then the third one is the failing test, where in this reaction, the failing test will change from the deep blue color, blue color, into the reddish brick color. And of course, the ketone also gives no reaction. Next, we move to the last reaction in the carbonyl compound, which is the nucleophilic addition reaction of carbonyl compound. For your information, most general reaction of aldehyde and ketone is the nucleophilic addition reaction. In this reaction, the nucleophile can be exist either in the form of negatively charged nucleophile or neutral nucleophile. So this is the this is a few examples of the negatively charged nucleophile. And then this is the few example for the neutral nucleophile. We can differentiate between the negatively charged nucleophile and nuclear neutral nucleophile because for the neutral nucleophile it usually carries a extra an extra hydrogen atom that can subsequently be eliminated for example water alcohol ammonia and amine next we move to the mechanism of this nucleophilic addition of carbonyl compound so this is the general mechanism for the nucleophilic addition if you can see here, when the negatively charged nucleophile reacts with the aldehyde or ketone, it will give the alcohol compound. However, when the neutral nucleophile reacts with the carbonyl compound, it will give a different compound with uh, a different compound where the C double bond O will convert into C double bond nucle nucleophile. Okay. First, we look into the mechanism of the negatively charged nucleophile with the carbonyl compound. At first, the nucleophile which reach 
electron will attack the C double bond O. At the same time, one bond from the C double bond O will give the electron to the oxygen. Then it will give the tetrahedral intermediate. Then the tetrahedral intermediate is protonated by water or acid. It means that one lone pair from the oxygen will give uh, will get the hydrogen from the water or acid to form the final product which is the alcohol compound. Next, we move to the mechanism of the neutral nucleophile with the carbonyl compound. Okay, same at first, the nucleophile which reach electron will attack the carbon at the C double bond O. At the same time, one bond from the C double bond O will give to the oxygen. Then it will give the intermediate product. In the intermediate product, the carbonyl oxygen atom is protonated. Okay, is protonated, which means one pair of electron will get the hydrogen from the nucleophile. Okay, then it can eliminate it as OH minus or water to give the product with the C double bond and U bond here. Meaning that either it will uh, get one uh, one hydrogen only or another lone pair of electron it will get the another hydrogen from the nucleophile at the same time bond between nucleophile and hydrogen will give to the carbon at the same time bond between carbon and oxygen will break and then this one will change will eliminate it from the intermediate product in the form of water then you will get the final product which is C double bond and nucleophile. This is the example of the reaction. From the example, when the cyclohexanone react with NaCN, okay, it will form the 1 hydroxy cyclohexane carbonitrate, which means the nucleophile. Okay, which means the nucleophile will attack the carbon C double bond O and then the oxygen will get the hydrogen from the HCl to form the hydroxyl group. And then if you can see the second reaction when the 1, 2, 3 uh, propanone react with the primary amine, okay, it will give a different compound where the primary amine will attack to the uh, C double bond O. So, which means it will change C double bond O, will change into the water, and then at this part, will change into the C double bond N here. I think that's all from me for this topic. So then, stay safe and goodbye. Thank you very much everyone. Bye.